How about now? How about now? Sounds good. Okay. Can you out of the speed as well? Yep. Yes. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Okay. I'm saying, how can because I just do that sometimes.
In the front of our beautiful, God's beautiful church here in New Hampshire. So, so just thank you for all here today. So we, with 2.5 billion, that's billion with uh, people around the world, we're here to celebrate the most significant event in human history that really changed the world forever, the resurrection of our Lord and Christ. So I want to celebrate and reflect on that amazing morning that is the foundation of our faith. Okay? We're getting a little My too far from the... <laughs> <laughs> Here, so... event <laughs> Christianity simply wouldn't exist. I also want to do something a little different today. What Easter... also mentions the women who visited the tomb early in the morning and their encounter with our risen Lord. So let's start off by reading Matthew's account of that first Easter morning. So this is from chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on that first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. Just kind of like, well, maybe that's not so white. <laughs> the guards were afraid of him, that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So, I want to start off today by telling you what I'm not going to preach about today. I'm not going to tell you the reasons why I'm so confident about the evidence of the resurrection. So I'm not going to tell you about the empty tomb. Jesus' body was never found. Uh, Romans went to great effort to protect the tomb so that the disciples wouldn't steal the body. I'm also not going to talk about... <laughs> How all four Gospels say that Jesus rode on the third day. Slight differences in details, but all the main points all agree. I'm also not going to talk about how all the disciples were almost immediately transformed from men who are hopeless, scared like little children, and fearful after the crucifixion into men who were confident and bold witnesses of the resurrection, and most all of them died for it. I'm also not going to talk about Apostle Paul's transformation on the road to Damascus, 
Saul, a persecutor of Christians, became the ambassador for Christianity after seeing the risen Christ. Paul claimed that not only had he seen the risen Christ, but that 500 others had also seen him. And many were alive when he made this public claim. He even told people, go talk to one of them who is still alive if you don't believe me. So I'm also not going to talk about all the multiple testimonies from even outside the Bible. I wouldn't have any time to go into all the details anyway about all the non-biblical testimonies about Jesus. But like I said, I'm not going to talk about that either. So lastly, I'm not going to talk about the martyrdom of the apostles, about the fact that if Jesus' followers were all liars who made up the story of Jesus' resurrection, it's hard to imagine all of them would have suffered a martyr's death for the sake of a lie. So I guess I lied, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled as the Messiah, the cultural, spiritual, and prophetic views that led up to Jesus coming. I gave a whole sermon on that a few weeks ago on March 3rd that you can watch on YouTube. So now you know all the stuff I'm not going to talk about today. So what am I going to talk about today? So as I sometimes do, I want to get a little bit more personal with you and talk about what Easter means to me personally. So Easter, first of all, means death is no more. The resurrection of Jesus gives us a different view of death. Death is no longer a dead end. It is no longer something that one must face with dread and despair. Death is no longer the enemy of those who believe because it has been challenged and conquered by our Lord. Because he lives, we shall live also. The teachings of Christ and his death would, would have been with, without a lot of merit and likely mostly forgotten if not for his resurrection. In the words of Charity Gale from the song, Thank You Jesus for the Blood, one of my wife's favorites, by the way, and now death has no sting and life has no end, for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. So number two, Easter means excitement. Because that tomb in Israel, those nearly 2,000 two years ago, was empty, I'm now excited about a future that's so incredibly beyond belief that I hardly know where to start. Can you even imagine meeting Jesus for the first time in visible form? Can you possibly wrap your mind around standing before God and hearing him say, well done, good and faithful servant? Well, in my case, you might say, well done, but you're only good sometimes. So, Easter to me means a surprise victory. You know, think about, like, the Patriots and the Falcons, right? Look at Mary and her friends as they came to the tomb that first resurrection morning. Of every thought that had come over them in recent days, of every experience they had endured, of seeing their friend Jesus on a cross, nail piercings, a spear wound, and an empty tomb was definitely not morning, the devil thought he had won. Jesus had died on the cross. His limp, lifeless body removed from the cross and laid in a tomb, secured, sealed, and guarded by Roman soldiers. Yet, surprise, death and the grave couldn't hold the Son of God. He had the authority to lay down his life, and he had the authority to take it up again. So this sunrise morning, here in New Hampton, New Hampshire, guess what? We worship and serve a risen and victorious Lord. I don't think any surprise in my life could ever be as big as seeing our risen Lord and our Savior firsthand. Jesus' victory, like I said, was even bigger surprise than the 2017 Patriots. 28 to 3, right? And they came back in the Super Bowl. And even bigger than that 2004 comeback that the Red Sox made against the Yankees. So, if you're a Falcons or a Yankees fan here today, I'm sorry. Well, not really. <laughs> but I am a sinner, so I'll get into that more later. <laughs> so, to 
me, Easter means hope and expectation. So, okay, what do I mean? What do I expect? So how about, how about this? Let's look at Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. From, this is from the, uh, the NLT version, so I want it to be kind of in plain English. So for we know when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So, I also believe we have the hope of living in our resurrection bodies with Christ as King after he returns to earth to make all things new here and earth. I just hope that my resurrection body, I'm a little taller with a little bit more hair, like when I was young. So I know some of you online are saying maybe a little thinner too, but I heard you say that. But anyway, uh, so I also hope to see the loved ones that have gone before me. Our true home, our final home, will be with our resurrection body. So John uh, 14, 1 through 4 also says, from the same translation, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. So I expect and have hope for great things when this life is over. I do not know all the details yet, but I do expect that there's a life experience that waiting for us that is fully conceivable to our mortal mind. And I don't expect to be disappointed in the least. So Easter number five, Easter also means to me that I know God's heart. Let's continue to look at John 14 on the following verses that I just read. This is these are verses uh, five through seven. And I just read one through four a little bit ago. Let's see what Jesus' response is to Thomas. So Thomas says, No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. So, if we know the heart of Jesus, by definition, we know the heart of God. I think the best words to describe what I mean here is, is from a song that I love called Scars by INA. And the chorus goes like this. So I'm thankful for the scars. Sorry about the Yankees and Falcons thing. That 
Easter to me means freedom. Freedom from my own sin. Freedom from my past. Freedom from past mistakes. I can live a life of freedom from guilt and despair because of what Jesus did for me and all of us on the cross. I know I won't live a perfect and sinful life, but the closer I walk with Jesus, the more I feel a sense of freedom and peace in my life. The belief that Jesus Christ is alive today, risen from the dead, is the most powerful belief in the world. When we truly believe in the risen Christ, we have a hope that withstands every disappointment and overcomes every fear. I want to close with the final and probably the most important thing that Easter means to me. And Easter means love. Jesus really set the gold standard for love. There is simply no greater love that can be shown to you or anyone, uh, and for me, than what Jesus did for us on the cross. It is simply the greatest love story of all time, no question about it. You can't argue with it. Mark 15, 38 says that the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom at Jesus' death. That symbolized Christ giving us all access to the Father. No more was it just religious leaders who had access to God, but all of us do. He did it for you, he did it for me. That means you can all have direct access to the Father, who you can humbly yet boldly come to in Jesus' name. This also means that no matter what you've done in your life, you can choose to give it over to God at any time. And he will welcome you with open arms. Even right here, right now, if you choose to do that. I don't know about you, but not only do I need Jesus in my life, I want Jesus in my life. You see, Jesus proved to us that God's grace and love is bigger than all of our sins. Jesus displayed a kind of love through that cross on that first Easter, which had never been seen before, and a love which changed the world, and a love we are all expected to imitate and show to the world. We only need to accept it. This, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is what Easter means to me. Hope is alive. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died so that we may have life, not only eternal life, but a life of freedom and hope here on earth. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for showing us your purpose for us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us. Thank you for your goodness. You are so, so good, and your faithfulness. Thank you for your guidance in our lives and the plans that you have for us in Christ Jesus. May we all leave this place today filled with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us sing the goodness of God.
just I thank you all for being here. We have a, a wonderful breakfast uh, in between our two services, and and I just look forward to celebrating this beautiful Resurrection Sunday with all of you. And thank you again for being here. God bless, and He is risen.